I was a true guinea pig. I was like, let me try everything. I'll try paleo, vegan, raw vegan. I mean, you name it, I tried it. So there was a component where I was genuinely curious, where I was like, if I'm going to work with clients one-on-one -on -one, one day, I genuinely want to understand what they're going through when they're on these diets. And also I had a peak of my own interest where I was like, I'm going to also figure out what, what I can do with food and how this works or this doesn't work. Welcome to The Healing Cocoon by Urban Ascension. I'm Jacoby Gray, your host and healing advocate, bringing you transformational stories each week to inspire personal change in your life and help you feel more supported as you embark on the healing process itself. Through the study of coaching, kinesiology, holographic kinetics, meditation, Reiki, the chakra system, and many other modalities, I've learned how to release the blocks that were holding me back. Now I'd love to help you do the same. Deactivating your triggers and your traumas means you activate your happiness so you can experience more alignment, connection, clarity, love, fulfillment, synchronicity and success than you ever thought possible. So from dark nights of the soul to radical breakthroughs and rebirth, this is the Healing Cocoon Podcast. Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome back to the Healing Cocoon podcast for another week. We took a little break while we did some freshening up around the place, so you may have noticed the new podcast introduction, and there's a new outro at the end, and we also changed the socials just slightly. So if you're following us on Instagram, you may have noticed our new, more sophisticated aesthetic. It's a simple change, but I am all about that minimalist effect. So to kick off our revamp, we have a very special guest on today's episode, Mikkel Kuinga, founder of Nutrition Stripped, author of the Nutrition Stripped cookbook, creator of the Mindful Nutrition Method and leading voice in mindful eating who was named top 20 role models by Ariana Huffington, no less. So of course, I'm super excited to have Mikkel on the show. I was very lucky to cross paths with her at a new moon circle in Nashville, and we stayed in touch as you do via the gram. But my intrigue with her was twofold. Not only is she someone who seems to glow from the inside out as she shares her inspiring life in the Nashville countryside, but also her offerings seem to be speaking directly to me. I honestly thought she was reading my mind. For example, I was bored with my green smoothie and Mikkel posted a really cool variation on a green smoothie. Then I decided I wanted to get more fiber in my diet, specifically through beans. And Mikkel just happened to post a whole bunch of bean recipes and it went on like that for a while before I was like, clearly I need to get this woman on the show because she is one step ahead of my dietary needs before I even know what they are. So you won't be disappointed. This episode dives deep into the psychology behind our relationship with food, achieving your balanced weight through nourishment, the first step to overcoming restricted eating, changing your narrative around food to encompass an abundant mindset, as well as Mikkel's personal food journey and mindful eating philosophy, and the incredible foundation her course will give you to create a healthy dietary knowledge to build your life upon. Mikkel's nutrition stripped community has reached millions of people around the world. She has an award nominated social media, is featured in Oprah.com, Women's Health, Today's Dietitian, Bon Appetit, Food Network, Healthline, and many more. Her proprietary mindful nutrition method, which is a transformative online experience with live group coaching, course materials, tools, and a private community for creating balanced eating habits, will help you be free from food and diet obsession, maintain a balanced weight, and cultivate a positive relationship with food and your body. So... I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed recording it. It's really a special one. Please share it if you do. And without further ado, Mikkel Kuinga. So I started Nutrition Stripped, which turns 10 this year, which is mind boggling. But I started this concept of Nutrition Stripped out of, 
I would say the start of my own healing journey. I was really interested in nutrition. Um, I was fresh out of college at the time of starting this creative outlet, which the intention truly was just a creative outlet. I really wanted to just share recipes that were nourishing, balanced, simple, fun, and just to get nutrition literally in the door. You know, food is such a beautiful vehicle for teaching nutrition. Um, So that was the intention behind it. And then also sharing articles and ideas and insights that I had about mindful living, mindfulness, mindful eating, having great connection with food, and having a good relationship with food, a healthy relationship with food, which for me means positivity, even neutrality as well, just having that day-to-day relationship with food be nourishing and not taxing or stressful or overwhelming because I came from that side of the spectrum. I used to have a relationship with food where it was what I would describe like all in mentality around food versus an all out. And what that means is where you're hyper fixated on food, you're overthinking it. I at the time had some health conditions like some migraines, some gut issues. I just wasn't feeling great. This was in college as a nutrition student. And so I was on this mission to like figure it all out by myself in true guinea pig fashion. But throughout that process, it also was just really taxing on my actual relationship with food. I started to see food as this like means to an end, point A to point B. I didn't really absorb myself in the food experience. Like old Mikel was like, what is mindful eating? (laughs) What does that even mean to have a positive relationship with food? So I came at it trying to figure out some health conditions, but it led me to just feeling really restricted around food, really rigid, like following all these diets, like something's got to be right for me. I got to eat clean. I should eat this. I shouldn't eat that. And if you've ever been there, Jacoby, which Mm -hmm. I've worked with thousands of women all over the world, all ages, demographics, it is a common thread that like 99% of the people I encounter have had this experience around food. And if you know it, you know it's also not sustainable. (laughs) What happens is you go on the other side of the spectrum, which is all out, and you feel really disconnected with food disconnected with your body. Like how does nutrition even work in my, in my body? What makes me feel really good? So throughout that whole process of me working on my journey with, and you know, with food and my relationship with food, I also was sharing this creative outlet with nutrition stripped and sharing my insight, working with clients. And so to kind of fast track from then 10 years later, Um, I'm working with clients all over the world to really support them to have balanced eating habits, have a positive relationship with food. And I do that inside of a few online courses, group programs, one-on-one coaching. Um, And I love, I love so much what I do because it's so powerful. You know, food is part of our lives. It's not like, it's not like another potential substance that you can get rid of. It's not like Mm -hmm. alcohol or drugs. You need food, you need nutrition. And so there are a lot of opportunities in our days to have a supportive relationship with food, or we might get stuck in those like all in, all out sides of the spectrum. So that's like, that's it in a nutshell and we can dive in. (laughs) Wow. I love that. What an incredible journey and what a blessing to stumble upon that desire to want to do that so soon out of college based on your own experiences. So were you, when you're referring to working with certain diets for your own health issues, were you doing things like FODMAP and, or gluten-free, or were you trying to sustain sort of restricted, um, dieting? All of the above. I was a true guinea pig. I was like, let me try everything. I'll try paleo, vegan, raw vegan, I mean, you name it, I tried it. So there was a component where I was genuinely curious, where I was like, if I'm going to work with clients one-on-one one day, I genuinely want to understand what they're going through when they're on these diets. And also I had a peak of my own interest where I was like, I'm going to also figure out what, what I can do with food and how this works or this doesn't work. So it was, it was a great experimentation time, but it also, as I mentioned, really reinforced some like imbalanced thoughts and feelings around food that I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't recommend experimenting Mm. with for a long period of time. 
Yeah, and I guess those um, mindsets or imbalances that you started to experience set you up with the ability to understand clients who maybe have even more severe or they struggle with eating disorders or the mentality that goes along with a lot of those things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think there's part personal experience and then combination, obviously, with professional experience of Mm -hmm. knowing all the science, but it's also so much of an art, especially with coaching and behavior change, habit change, mindset work around food. So absolutely, it all comes together in this really beautiful synergistic way. Yeah, and I think it's really important that we let our audience know that you're not only coming from this desire to help other people based on your own experiences, but you are very studied in this area. Will you tell us a little bit about your education? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a registered dietitian and I went through a traditional and the in the states you pretty much have one path to be a registered dietitian. So I went through that in a clinical nutrition path. And um, as it sounds, very clinical. So what you would think being very scientific, anatomy, physiology, all the nuts and bolts of how the human body works, which I think if you're working with nutrition or health, that is a vital foundation. And throughout my, I would say, undergrad, it started, um, I really was interested in, I would say, functional integrative nutrition practices Um, Again, on my own healing journey, I was trying everything. So yoga piqued my interest, mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And I would, outside of my academia and what I had to do for school as a dietitian, I really just wanted to soak in as much information as possible about mindfulness, stress reduction therapies, psychology, behavior change, um, just everything that makes us unique as individuals that changes our behaviors long-term because that's really what it's about as well. When you're working with people with food, as I mentioned, food is, it's in our lives. It's here to stay. So we have to make sure that we are changing our behaviors in a way that actually works and actually sticks depending on a unique individual and their lifestyle, their stresses. So I was really into just exploring those other integrative questions and those um, more holistic viewpoints outside of just here's what Joe, Jill, Jamie eats. They have a heart condition. Here's the pathway. I more so wanted to be like, here's, yes, that recipe of what we need to know as a foundation, but what foods do they like? Do they have food preferences? Do they have food allergies? Who's at home cooking? Are they doing the grocery shopping? Are they stressed? How do they deal with it? So it's it's a big holistic view. And I would say that my philosophy started Um, in terms of the nutrition strip philosophy and what I practice today, it started back then really asking those questions and thinking about the unique individual as a, as a whole. Wow. So you really tailor um, the eating experience to each client that you work with individually. Oh yeah, absolutely. I believe you have to, (laughs) I believe you have to in terms of getting anywhere with real lasting power and change. Mm. Mm, So then you have an online course, which um, people can take if they don't have the opportunity, because you're only one person (laughs) to work with you one on one. How do you then cater sort of a one course to fit everybody? Yeah, that's a great question. So the mindful nutrition method course is what I believe you're referencing. That's really my flagship offering right now. And I created that four years ago to to date, I believe, in terms of the actual program itself. Yet over my decade of experience working with thousands of individuals one-on-one and students, I picked up a lot of common themes that I was seeing. And so that really allowed me to lay the groundwork for what the Mindful Nutrition Method program entails, that pretty much anyone could gather that data those course information, the materials, and apply it into their own life. So for example, one big part of my program is all about vision and really connecting with your own individual why, which you could also state this is similar to like goal setting or I know your community will understand manifestation and all of that. So it's similar to that, like really connecting to the heart of why you want to change your eating behaviors and why it's why it matters because if we don't have that 
or if we're not connected with that, it's really difficult to have a compass for our day-to-day life when we're trying to pick up habits that nourish us, whether it's like drinking water or grabbing takeout, cooking a meal from home. We really have to connect with why are these why are these actions really important to me? So that's a huge component. That's all of phase one, essentially, in my entire program. And that also works on the mindset. So I had mentioned, you know, food is part of our life. It's integrated. And having a strong mindset and a positive mindset around food is really, really supportive, especially for those who, as I mentioned, had a imbalanced relationship with food where I was like really all in or all out. So working with individuals and sharing tools that anybody can use um, is really, really supportive for everybody's journey. And then, and I have two other phases. The second phase is really discussing the what to eat, which I think is interesting. And I want to point this out because the first thing I actually teach people as a dietitian, you would think is what to eat. What are you putting on your plate? What's the nutrition component? But actually, I start with the mindset. I start with the unique individual in terms of honoring your preferences, your why, and really connecting to that strong foundation before you even you know, hop into what do I need to put into my smoothie? What do I need to concentrate on building meals? That's really important, but we need to get the mindset you know, foundation really, really strong first. So that second phase is all about what to eat. And so I created a really easy, super easy system called the Foundational Five. And that essentially is like Nutrition 101, where you are looking at a plate, you're building a smoothie, you're out and about at a social gathering with food. And it's about consuming macronutrients, which we all know, protein, fat, starchy carbohydrates, and what I would consider like simple carbohydrates like your sugar and fruit and things, Mm. and then flavor factor, which is really that deliciousness. It brings that like, ooh, I'm I'm enjoying this meal, which I think is a really important component to to the meal experience. So breaking that down, again, all of these little tiny tools that are included in the course meet people where they are right now and also are – you know, spaciousness enough, spacious enough for them to add in their own unique spin to it, honor their likes, their dislikes, their unique body. And then in addition to that, we have a private community where I'm literally there, you know, if they have questions, sharing direct feedback and such. Um, But that's such a beautiful program. And it's also really beautiful to see people who have dieted for a year versus people who have been dieting for three decades all come together and have a similar goal in mind, which is to be more confident around food, um, have this positive relationship with food, and just feel like food isn't taking away from their life because they're so in their head about it or overthinking it. And they're coming from wildly different experiences and life stories. And it's just really beautiful to have that safe space where they can just share stories, share experiences. This is what worked for me. This is what didn't. So um, I think that's just a really unique combination of why it works trying to help so many people with the same goal when I am just one person here. Yeah, well, it is it is mindset. And I love that you start there because I know myself, my struggles have mainly been with sugar in the past. And that's something that I've always just been like, okay, I just have to cut it out, you know, completely. And then of course, at some point I fall off the bandwagon and then there's that experience of, oh, well, I'm off the bandwagon now. I may as well just eat as much as I can today and start again tomorrow, but then maybe I will or maybe I won't. And it's that constant up and down. And so I just, I really love that you're diving into the mindset. And perhaps for me, I know that it was a crutch and I was using sugar as a drug, as a little high to take me out of my, the things I hadn't dealt with in my own life yet. And there was a depressed element and I was using sugar to kind of, um, yeah, sort of take me out of that. Now I understand that, but I love that you approach the mindset first and you look at what's going on behind the eating habits as opposed to just going, okay, well, let's look at what you're eating. I'm interrupting this awesome chat to tell you about one of my all-time favorite creations, the Chakra Meditations, a potent combination of Yoga Nidra, Binaural Beats, and the Chakra System 
These meditations are designed to guide you into a deep state of relaxation where your nervous system can totally decompress and create the space for healing. I took my time crafting these meditation scripts because I wanted to make sure they resonated with every ounce of truth, transformation and light I could hold. Each individual meditation addresses the specific attributes of each chakra and has a soundscape composed by source vibrations that is attuned to the frequency of each chakra as well. So from the main root aspects of prosperity, grounding and belonging, all the way up to the bliss, self-reflection and enlightenment of the crown chakra, each meditation is going to take you on an intricately curated journey to energetic freedom. You can download them via the link in the show notes of this episode or on our website, urbanascension.co. That's C-O, not .com, urbanascension.co under the chakra banner. I can't wait for you to experience their magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jacoby, I also want to honor that because that's such an amazing aspect of your own journey with food that you you just expressed of having that connection of food and emotions or mm -hmm. uncovering a little bit what was the factor behind eating sugar or what have you. And you had mentioned like there were some emotions there. And I think that's just so important to um, – just sit on for a minute because it's really common. I will have so many inquiries, not even just from my mindful nutrition method students and clients, but from the nutrition strip community, friends, family, where there's there tends to be a lot of shame and guilt when you engage in eating from an emotional place, right? Emotional eating, stress eating, boredom eating. You can label it whatever you want. And it's really important to have some self-compassion when you're in those moments of emotional eating. And it sounds like you did this. And I just, I, I think this is so amazing because having that awareness, the self-compassion and just the curiosity to be like, Hey, I wonder why I'm gravitating towards sugar. Or I wonder why I feel like at the end of the day, I finished my day and I just want to like binge eat or overeat, which I find is really common. And sometimes when we just like, just give ourselves that hug and self-compassion and curiosity and ask, I wonder why I'm doing this. You might be surprised of what other emotions below the surface are actually the catalyst for, for engaging in those behaviors, boredom, anxiety. Well, I feel like I need a quick reward because I worked really hard today and I had stress, mm. you know, stressful engagements at work or the collective energy is stressing me out. Whatever it is, I just think that's such a powerful place of awareness. Just like that's a huge step is just the awareness. Then you can take actions and work on that later on. But even just having the observation and the awareness of why you're eating foods and where it's coming from can be just so powerful. So I just wanted to call that out because it's just a very common experience for everybody. We're humans. Yeah. <laughs> we're humans yeah. and we are emotional beings and we eat food. It's bound to happen. Mm. And do you find a lot of people gravitate towards your work who are maybe ready to go a little bit deeper psychologically on their journey as opposed to the people who are still in on the diet sort of treadmill and just trying to control it? I would say uh, both both demographics enjoy the mindful nutrition method work. I will say I go I go so far in terms of my scope of expertise and practice within the psychological realm. And um, but the one thing I do know is when I work with mindful nutrition method students and clients, there's so much power when you have support and community and accountability and if you have even just friends, like your little literal support and community, like your inner circle, let alone other health practitioners, like therapist, psychologist, because as you had mentioned something with depression and food, um, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it, it occurs, it's a natural overlap, but to have that support and have other healthcare practitioners really guide you to get out of that is really powerful. So I would say I'm, I'm a great guide and insight teacher for the food, the nutrition, the awareness, the mindfulness building, and that connection. And also I love helping other people 
you know, dive deeper with other healthcare practitioners who can really get them out of that full, that full emotional eating expression. Mm, yeah. So it's a, it's very complementary to people who are needing a, a much deeper journey with food, um, as well as being a really great tool for people who are just genuinely looking to put more nutrients in their body. And something you said right back at the beginning, which just caught my interest, you said food is a really great way to teach about nutrition. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, isn't food nutrition? Like suddenly that just kind of blew something open in my mind. Can you talk about that theory a little bit more? Yeah. Well, as I had mentioned on my journey, I would think about food. I wouldn't think about food, actually. It was just very like, this is the food I need to eat. Or I would have periods of my life where it was really restrictive thinking. So I would deduce the food to calories. This has protein. This has fiber. This has 20, 20 calories. This has 100 calories, right? And this is, this is still common language that I hear people talk about with food. However, in flipping the the script on it, if you will, the conversation around food, we can approach, let's say, you know, a banana. Bananas are a great source of fiber. These are going to nourish me with potassium. They're going to give me some quick energy because they're a carbohydrate and they break down in a quick way. That's going to give me that boost, which is that glucose primary source of energy. So when we think about that component versus this is a carb, I can't have it, this is too high in sugar, name XYZ food rule that you might have around it. It allows there to be a little bit more of an abundant mindset and also just a neutrality because with the food rules or when you're labeling or looking at food as just calories or I should, it, should eat this, I shouldn't eat that, it tends to be in a fixed mindset, meaning it could be really negative or there's like a lot of stress around it versus... Mm other option, you're, you're thinking about all of the components that that food has in it. And you don't have to know all the minerals and the vitamins and such and all of your food sources. It could be a fun exercise just to, you know, do a quick Google search and find what's in an orange just for your own education so that you can appreciate that food. But it's not just the breakdown of nutrition. It's also about real, real nourishment. Um, truly nourishing your physical body, yes, with those nutrients and the fiber and all the beautiful macronutrients, and also with that that mindset and that embodiment of like taking care of yourself um, and honoring your needs and your likes and your dislikes. So I think, and even like cooking, sharing a meal with others, like food is so much more than just the physical nourishment. It's all these beautiful components that when we start to think about food in a different way, it can be, yeah, it's just so much more about that, that food. It's, it's the whole nourishment piece. Mm, and I love the term nourishment. That's something that has been a word that I've been working with in the last few years, like nourishing myself on all levels. And something that I think is a byproduct of nourishment is clear headedness and clarity and ability to make clearer decisions. Um, but I know that a lot of people are still using food as a way to say, lose weight and control their weight. But genuine nourishment is going to naturally bring you to your, uh, maybe not your desired weight range, but a healthy weight range for you. Could you speak a little bit about that connection? Yeah, sometimes the word desired or ideal weight, right? When we think about that, <laughs> like it could be a physical weight that number one, we're just, we all have unique body shapes, sizes, genetics, like having a ideal or a desired weight could be something that you've never experienced and you might not ever. And it's really the importance of your weight, in my opinion, is finding a way that you're nourishing yourself with food that you like, that doesn't stress you out, where you're not overthinking it, where you have a positive relationship with food. And as you said, like the quote, happy weight, I like to call it like the balanced weight, which is that weight that just naturally exists when you are embodying those principles of not having constant fear around food or feeling loss of control around food, which can lead to both restriction in terms of yo-yo dieting, and it can also lead to binge eating, overeating. 
But when you have that solid approach in terms of your mindset with food, that also supports the physical embodiment of your balanced weight is what I like to call it. Mm, Balanced weight. Yeah, that's great. Um, How do you what would you say for someone who is very restricted in their eating right now, what would be the very first step that they could take towards a healthier um, connection with food? I would say the first step is if they are a restricted eater or they feel really tightly wound around food, highly regulated, really stressed, feel like they have to, exert a lot of control around food, I believe that the first step must be the awareness component. As in, if you have insight and awareness that that is your experience around food. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can take people years, decades to even understand that that's actually their reality around food. So that is a huge first step is just owning where you're at. And when you do that, not having shame and not making yourself feel bad that you are in a state of feeling really restricted around food and, and again, stressed or overthinking about food, having that compassion to just see yourself for where you are. That is a huge first step because that self-compassion, which I sound like a broken record when I say it over and over, but it is a core piece. I'm here for it. Self-compassion is something we're not... We are absolutely not taught to have in this society. Speak it as many times as you yes. want. <laughs> yes, but it is so vital because when, whenever you're then going from feeling like you're restricted around food, if you want any change that's really going to stick with you, that really feels aligned and allows you to live the life that you want to live without constantly being preoccupied with food, that self-compassion is a core pillar that you're just going to bring into your daily life, that loving kindness, that curiosity, that present moment, momentness with yourself. So that would be the, the first. And then the second, in terms of another step that I would recommend someone who is feeling really restricted around food. So let's say that those, those are in that all in mentality group, if you will, in order for them to not sway on the other side of the swing and go all out and just be Mm. super disconnected and really mindless in terms of their eating behaviors or distracted or even binge eating, overeating is to then just ask, like have them just pose this question to yourself of how can I just release a little bit? How can I maybe enjoy that food that is on the should not eat list or what I have been avoiding and restricting from from all these years. Could I could I experiment with that? And if it's a no, that's okay. But at least you're asking the question and experiencing that. Um, again, these might seem so small that they're not going to do anything. But when you are in a state of being all in with your food, that will create further space for you to then be able to actually have capacity to make real change. So I do walk people through this in the mindful nutrition method. I also have a fun little free quiz on nutritionstrip.com just in case you're like, Mikkel, I don't know if I'm all in or all out. Like what is, where, where am I on this spectrum? I actually have like a one minute quiz. You can find out your eating type. And within that, I also give some recommendations just to align with maybe a little baby step that you can take Mm -hmm. today. But those would be the two things I would say to somebody who's feeling really restricted around food. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. And the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is it's been coming up for me lately and I'll explain why, Um, but vegetables and how can we get more of them into our life? And the reason why I'm asking this is because until a few days ago, I thought I was eating quite a wide variety of vegetables. And then I've, there's been, there was two sort of podcasts I was listening to and on each one, both of the scientists talked about the microbiome and one of them said for a healthy microbiome you need to at least eat at least 30 different vegetables a week and that can include seeds and herbs and things like that and at that point I was like oh I'm I eat a range but I'm I guess now I'm kind of restricted in the range that I eat like I know I like broccolini and a sweet potato and a tomato and I'll have you know, I'll go shopping and I'll buy, purchase those specific vegetables. But that sort of made me think, do I need 
even more vegetables in my life. And then I was listening to another podcast where, again, they were talking about um, the microbiome and a great way to get vegetables in your life is through smoothies. And she was working with this ex-physicist who uh, created, um, or not created, but ended up with a autoimmune disease who cured it through putting 53 different vegetables into a smoothie every single day. But because he was a physicist, he was monitoring himself and, and it was obviously someone who went to the extremes in another way. So my question is, I guess, if you would like to speak on the microbiome or not, that's fine. But it, this has just made me think vegetables. I didn't even know there was 53 different kinds of vegetables, let alone how would I eat them every day? <laughs> right. So I am not an expert in the microbiome and gut health to that extent. However, I will say in gathering that there are a few things. So let's say that that is the potential ideal circumstance, like for optimal health. Um, let's just say that that is the ideal. However, we also have to get grounded in what our reality is with not only like likes and dislikes with literal food preferences, like tastes and textures and things that we like. Um, there's also another hurdle with that. For example, having 53 different vegetables and herbs and fruits and such in one smoothie with just access. Um, how many of us have access to those types of things? So how I would like to make it simple just from that quick question is Having vegetables at every meal could be a goal that feels realistic and also making them like swap them out week to week. Make it really simple for yourself to where let's say that you have a salad at lunch and you're trying to eat the rainbow, which could be just another quick, simple guideline for you to follow and have vegetables, have them be varied and then maybe swap out the difference of the vegetables that you're using one week to the next week. Um, that could be more practical and realistic. Uh, that would be my initial, just from where I'm coming from, having mindful <laughs> yeah. eating and balance. I, mean, I knew eating. that was an extreme example, but I think <laughs> yeah. just hearing like, those two well, so quickly just made me think about vegetables. Was the, yeah, the line. no, but it's an ama- it's an amazing question and concept. And again, it's like in an ideal world, yes, that would be amazing to like. And I have I grow my own food, and I probably could with the wild edible plants and the things that I grow and even purchase from the grocery store, I could probably make out to 53, but I'm just not going to do that as well. For me, it's a food preference thing. It's, it's just in terms of embodiment and what feels good, what tastes good. Um, but again, if that's healing a health condition, that might be another level of um, not an extreme, but just some like a, a medical pathway that you could do to, address some health health condition under supervision. But for the most of us, in terms of focusing on eating more vegetables, you can make it simple. Also try your best. Number one, genuinely put an effort and try your best. Number two, try to eat the rainbow, which is cliche, but it works. And that just helps you reinforce adding variety, adding different nutrients found within a red cabbage versus a red pepper and kale and collard greens, what have you. And then switch them out from week to week. And that also just feels more realistic because we also want it to be sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. Like if some of us were going to try that 53 ingredients movie, how many weeks could we sustain that? There might be some people who could do that. And that's amazing. (laughs) But it's also okay if you can't and you want to switch it out and make it a little simple on yourself. Mm, because I think I've been a big green eater. I love my greens, anything green. And I often, that is predominantly my shopping, um, my cart. It's just all green. But now I'm thinking, oh, maybe I do need a yellow pepper instead of always a green pepper. Or maybe I do need more carrots. Um, is it important to eat all the colors? Yes, I would say switch it up. And also it's just in addition to the nutrient profile, because there are different nutrients found in, let's say, a purple sweet potato and a white potato or a, um, you know, a strawberry versus, again, like if you're focusing on all green vegetables, like, or excuse me, green fruits, like a green apple, there's going to be different nutrients in different fruits and vegetables. So having those different color profiles could just be an easy guideline for you to follow. Again, when you're visibly looking at your cart saying, okay, this is what I'm going to be consuming this week. And just to switch it up also with again, habit change and with making this sustainable, 
when you can switch things out like different flavors, different textures, it gives you a different food experience. So when you're eating like a delicious salad that's rich in green veggies, like let's say you have butter leaf lettuce, which is really delicate and soft. And then the next week you swap, swap it out for something heartier like kale or something. It gives you a different food experience, which also I believe helps you stick to those eating habits because it makes it a little bit more interesting. You're not getting bored. And also there might be different cooking or prep methods with that. So you're not only adding to your skill set, but you're adding more like excitement with it versus boredom and eating the same thing over and over again. So I think there's just, there's a few components there when you look up switching things out based on color nutrition and then also with just habit change nutrition. I love that color nutrition. I'm embracing that and I'm going to be more colorful now when I go to the grocery store. (laughs) So in terms of your personal journey, where you were at the beginning, you said it's been 10 years now that you've been doing nutrition stripped. Um, How do you feel uh, health-wise? Do you feel in full vitality and vibrancy? And has this all been based in in your own mindful eating? Oh, I love this question. What a beautiful reflection. And I would say, yes, night and day, um, reflecting on my food experience more than 10 years ago, pre-even thinking about being a dietitian compared to today. Um you know, like I said, food was such a preoccupation in my mind. It was just zapping my mental energy, taking so much of my experience away, like not even just from around food, but just even in social engagements and gatherings. And that's just such a night and day situation for me now. I love food. Food is, like I said, nourishment for our physical body. It's so important to eat what our body needs, but it's also very important to eat food that we want and that we enjoy, that we have pleasure in, that we can share a meal with others and just fully have it be an addition to our life and add abundance and add to just our experience of this life versus taking away from it. So that's where I'm at in terms of abundance. And I mean, I love cooking. My husband and I cook every night, most, most nights. I will say he is a better cook than I am. So I will give him credit for that. Lucky you. But having those beautiful experiences around food and it's just so fun and it's a form of love and tradition and culture. It's it's just a wonderful aspect of our lives when we, again, have that supportive relationship with food where it's really positive and we can look at it as that abundance, adding to nourishment, enjoyment. So that's, that's where I'm at. That's also where in an ideal world, I would love everybody to be at as well. Mm. And I'm sure so many people who have been touched by you are in that place as well, which is really beautiful. And we're going to link everything in the show notes um, so people can access you and hopefully form a relationship with you, follow you on Instagram and check out your website and even sign up for your course. And it sounds like mindful eating is also going to become, well, it's going to make you more mindful in your life. And I always find whether you decide to be more mindful in, through meditation or through eating or any kind of mindful practice, it always impacts every area of your life and your mindset. I absolutely agree with that. Yes, mindfulness is a, a current that will hit everything in your life, your work, your relationships, how you show up, how you nourish yourself. It is, it is everything. Thank you for supporting the Healing Cocoon podcast. It's your listening ears that make it all possible. What also makes it possible is if you rate, subscribe and review the show. Reviews in particular are really cool, not only because they help our ratings, but also because I have no way of knowing how the podcast is positively impacting your life. So if you feel like sharing, please do. I would love to hear from you.